What is going on my Guardian Gamers? It is I, Birdman, back with another Destiny 2 build. And today I'm gonna to be showing off a really solid kind of lockdown weapon focused Titan build using not only the ambient leaps, but also the new exotic AR, Kvostov 7. Now, obviously for the Kvostov, you have to go through its entire uh, weapon quest and everything to get it, but it is absolutely worth it, especially with a lot of the new prismatic uh, fragments we have and just how transcendence works as a whole. But before we get into the video, I know you can follow me over on YouTube and Twitter at Birdman778. Give a thumbs up on this video. Let me know something you're interested in seeing down below, whether it's Titan, Hunter, or Warlock. Subscribe, become a member. Check the dim link down below to use this setup yourself. And also make sure you're checking out my maxroll.gg page. I am now a contributor over there doing a lot of builds and stuff like that. So going over there, check out all the other great creators who are contributing to that. So let's get right on into the build. Now we always like to talk about the exotic with the setup and it's going to be the ambient leap legs. They read puppeteers control, improves stringers, lash projectiles, track targets more aggressively and travel farther, gain woven mail when you suspend a target. Now, these are great, obviously, because again, it's going to boost up our Dranger's Lash, give it more suspension, you make it a lot more aggressive and efficient. But like one of the biggest things that I think people kind of like sleep on is the fact that you get that free woven mail whenever you suspend targets. Uh, that's a great way, especially with Prismatic, is stacking on an additional piece of, you know, just like damage reduction and another buff on top of that, just so that you can kind of combine it with the other things that we're going to have in this setup. Now let's talk about the Prismatic subclass. And first we're going for our super, we're going to be using Twilight Arsenal. I'm a big fan of this because it not only does a whole lot of extra just damage on its own, but it's also going to weaken targets. And also picking up those axes and being able to throw them again at a target is just awesome for just one big AOE splashes on maybe like mobs and stuff like that. But just like, you know, if somehow the enemy, like the big boss is not dead already from uh, the first use of it, you can just pick those back up, throw them again, and then they're likely going to be taken down. For our abilities, you have to use Rally Barricade for this, uh, but at the same time, it's really great. I know a lot of people have been enjoying Thruster, uh, being able to use that with Prismatic, but at the same time, just using the Classic Barricade is what's something you have to use with this setup. For our melee, I decided to go with Shield Throw. One, because it's going to give us an easy activation of Overshield so that whenever I throw that at target and hit them, I'm going to get that Overshield popped on top of me. But also, it's just great for like sitting behind that barricade and getting just like a ranged melee off. It's going to hit some targets. It's going to take down Void Shields. It's just a really good option all around. And for our grenade, Suppression Grenade is something I really have been enjoying. Shockingly enough, I didn't, I didn't think I was ever going to take off Pulse Grenade. But this one's really great because it combos well with one of the fragments we use, but also getting that suppression effect on targets is really freaking nice. When it comes to our aspects, obviously the biggest one is going to be Dranger's Lash. Activate your barricade ability to create a ripple in reality that travels forward along the ground, suspending and damaging the targets it hits. That suspension is huge, one, because it's going to be a darkness debuff on targets, but also for the fact that it's just going to take enemies out of the fight for us so that we don't have to deal with them. Uh, and it's also going to make it a lot easier to shoot them with a Kvostov when they're up in the air and, you know, not being able to do anything. And second, it's going to be Diamond Lance. One, it's another use of darkness debuffs on targets, but also the new, like, kind of, like, buff that they did to Shatter and Freeze is really freaking awesome. And the fact that we can just grab one of these, throw them at targets, and then just melt them kind of the same way with, like, the suspension. They're just kind of out of the fight for a second for you to just unload on them. When it comes to our fragments, Facet of Grace is a really important one in my opinion, especially since you're going to be using the Kvostov 99% of the time with this build. Defeating a target with kinetic weapons grants you bonus transcendence energy, and defeating targets with your super grants you and nearby allies bonus transcendence energy. This is kind of a twofer. Obviously, one, the kinetic part of it, increasing that transcendence bar, but also just getting that free energy from our super is really awesome. Facet of Solitude, landing rapid precision hits on enemies is going to sever them. And while I'm transcendent, that's going to be a bigger blast. Uh, obviously, sever is really great for just reducing the damage uh, enemies are going to put out. Uh, but also, again, it's another darkness debuff that's going to kind of feed into one of our other fragments. Facet of Hope, while you have an elemental buff, your class ability regenerates more quickly. This is obviously great for a couple different reasons. One, we're going to get that from our Void Overshield whenever we throw that uh, shield throw. It's going to be really important of getting that, so it's going to get us that barricade back, so then we can suspend more targets. 
but also we're going to get that from Radiant from our artifact whenever we pick up an Orb of Power. Fast and Indominus is a really awesome one, kind of going back to the Suppression Grenade. Um, your Void Grenades weaken targets, so you're now you're going to get Suppression and Weaken off of one grenade, meaning that you can use it offensively a lot more uh, while also being able to like kind of like take targets out of the fight while also make them take more damage. Facet of Sacrifice, while you have an Arc Solar Void buff, Ability Final Blows grant bonus darkness energy. Again, this is going to be a big one for having that Overshield and Radiant activated all the time. And then finally, Facet of Purpose, picking up an Orb of Power grants uh, you any of the things. Obviously, we're using Overshield based on your damage type. So picking up an Orb of Power is not only going to get us that Void Overshield, it's also going to get us Radiant from our Artifact. Now, I keep talking about it, and obviously the main weapon we're going to be using for this is the Kvostov. It's intrinsic trait, the right choice. Every seventh bullet from the weapon deals additional damage and ricochets to nearby targets. That ricochet is absolutely insane for ad clear. Like, I can't express how good it is even just against, like, regular targets as well. And then the other trait, Eyes Up Guardian, this is going to be the one that's going to kind of help you out the most. Collecting orbs of power strengthen this weapon's next several ricochet shots, providing more damage and more bounces between targets, meaning everyone is going to die. Now, let's kind of talk about some of the mods and everything we're going to be using for this setup. First up on our helmet, I'm using a kinetic siphon for this for the fact that rapid kinetic final blows is going to create an orb of power, meaning it's going to feed my Kvostov, giving it more of those great ricochet shots, but also feed into that fragment to give me overshield and also feed into my artifact, giving me uh, radiant. Heavy ammo finder is always a really nice one to have to kind of kind of obviously keep up your heavy weapon ammo. And then also I'm using dynamo. Um, biggest reason why I'm using this is because I should be activating that barricade around targets like nearly all the time. So it should be pretty easy to do. No, this can probably be swapped out for ashes to assets since you will be throwing a lot of grenades as well. In regards to our arms, I'm using a kinetic loader. Obviously give me that faster reload on my Kvostov altering detonation so that I'm going to get a lot more class ability energy whenever I get final blows with my grenade or just doing damage as is and then obviously a firepower so that whenever I do get final blows with my grenade it's going to give me an orb of power. Chest piece is completely just based on you know resistance mods in whatever encounter you're going at that time. I typically just hold one for each of the light subclasses. On our legs, recuperation. So whenever I pick up an orb of power, I'm getting some health back and then I'm running a double weapon surge. Biggest reason for this is so I'm getting a 17% boost to my Kvostov damage as long as I have an armor charge active. And then finally on our Titan Mark, a bomber so that whenever active my class ability near targets, I'm going to get some grenade energy back, ensuring I'm always having that suppression weakening grenade available to me. A Reaper so that whenever I get a weapon final blow after activating my class ability, I'm going to get an orb of power. And then powerful attraction to grab all those orbs in an area around me whenever I activate that class ability. Now, when it comes to the artifact, most of the like good things are going to be coming from the third, fourth, and the fifth column. First up, Elemental Siphon, rapid final blows of kinetic weapons or a weapon matching your equipped super, create an elemental pickup that matches your equipped super, meaning we're going to get a lot of those void breaches available to us with the Arc Boss off kills. And then also press the advantage, breaking command and shield grants, increased weapon stability, handling and reload speed uh, for a short amount of time. Obviously really great. In the fourth column, Void Hegemony, uh, while you have a Void or Prismatic subclass equipped, uh, defeating weakened targets provides a small overshield. Obviously, we're going to be doing that pretty consistently with our grenade, as well as our super, and then also rat, uh, radiant orbs. Obviously, keep talking about that. Picking orb power is going to make us radiant. And in the final column, I'm going to be kind of doing like a flex here. Expanding Abyss is a really nice one to have. Void sources deal increased damage to weakened targets. This is obviously just going to juice up your super as much as you humanly want. Uh, but I will say you can probably swap it out for Shield Crush if you were just wanting that extra melee damage and recharge rate while you have an Overshield on. Uh, and also, obviously, while you are Radiant, which is going to be all the time, uh, your grenade will recharge faster and deal more damage as well. So kind of just depends on like really what you want to do here. And then finally, Transference, I think is a huge one. Gain increase grenade and melee damage while Transcendent. That's obviously good, but the second part is really nice, especially for this build. Uh, weapon final blows while transcendent refund light and dark energy after transcendence ends, meaning you're just constantly shooting with that uh, while you're transcendent. You're going to have most of that bar back for you as soon as it is over. It is such a nice artifact perk. Kind of going over how this is effective against all the different champion types. First up for barrier, uh, we're going to be having those radiant effects available to us like nearly all the time. So you can just pretty much take down targets with your Kvostov as long as you are radiant. 
for uh, Unstoppable, we have the ability to suspend targets with our class ability. So that's a great way to do it there. Uh, but also I have like the uh, Indebted Kindness on as my secondary. So obviously that's a really good choice as well. And then finally, Overload. Uh, biggest thing here is going to be our grenade. It's able to do suppression on targets, but know that you can just, you know, put on yeah, a sword or something like that for the season since swords are overload as well. Thanks so much for watching the video. Hope you guys really enjoy it. Again, make sure you're checking this out over on my Max Roll page. Uh, you'll have an entire breakdown, everything over there. Also, dim link down below. And please definitely give us a thumbs up and a comment on the video. It helps us out on the algorithm. Subscribe, become a member, and follow me over on YouTube and Twitter at Birdman778. Guys, thank you so much. Hope you have a great night, day, whatever it may be.